Illinois, 1862. A 19-year-old named Albert stands waiting for a medical exam, hoping he won't have to undress. He has answered President Lincoln's call for volunteers to put down the Southern Rebellion. To join the Union Army, a person had to be able to march and run. You had to have a trigger finger and enough teeth to rip open a powder cartridge. You had to be a man. Though Albert started his life as a girl, his cropped hair and manner of dress raised no questions. He's healthy and able-bodied. That's all the examiner needs to see. He passes. Albert Cashier is now a member of the Union Army, one of the few transgender men known to have fought in the Civil War. At 17 years old, Albert crossed the Atlantic from Ireland as a stowaway. The ship carried him to his new life as a transgender man. Albert traveled west to seek adventure, and when the war broke out, he joined the Union Army. In the 95th Illinois Regiment, they called him Al, or Little Albert. These were his brothers. He fought in over 40 engagements with his regiment. He was known as a shy but scrappy soldier, sometimes even a reckless one. In the middle of one battle, Albert climbed a huge tree, dodging bullets to raise a Union flag. He made it through three years of service without injury, giving no one cause to question his gender. After the war, Albert settled in the small town of Sonneman, Illinois, where he marched with his fellow Civil War veterans in the yearly parade. He worked as a jack-of-all-trades at the hardware store and on local farms. He taught the town children how to ring the church bells and lit the street lamps at night. In 1910, Albert was working as a handyman for his local senator when his boss accidentally hit him with his Model T, shattering his leg and his quiet life. Albert's gender was discovered by the attending doctor, but his boss, Senator Lish, stood by him and still saw Albert as the man he'd always known. He arranged for Albert's admission to the local soldier's home and promised him his dignity. After several quiet years at the soldier's home, Albert began to show signs of dementia. By now, an old man unable to speak for himself, he was transferred to the Watertown State Mental Hospital, where he was exposed as a transgender man. Without the support of his friends, he was transferred to the women's ward. The nurses forced him to wear a dress. Albert's story was leaked to the press and became front page news across the country. The federal government opened an investigation, charged him with identity fraud, and threatened to revoke his pension. Albert's brothers from the 95th came forward. His allies testified on their friend's behalf about his bravery and loyalty. Al was one of their own. He deserved to keep his pension. The court agreed. The case was dismissed and he kept his pension. But despite the protest of his friends and comrades, the hospital refused to remove him from the woman's ward. Albert fought against the dress and used safety pins to fashion it into trousers, but it made no difference. One day, Albert tripped on the hem of the dress and broke his hip. He never recovered. His comrades from the 95th gathered once more to make sure their brother in arms was buried as the man they knew him to be. Albert Cashier was given a full military funeral in the town cemetery, laid to rest in his Union blues. Albert's is just one of the many untold histories of trans pioneers who have lived, loved, and died in this country. We've been around. <laughs>